Hi guys, I'm Pooja from Alek Art and Architecture. I'm also the video producer at Home Banao. Today our topic is low budget balcony home offices. So lately we've got a lot of queries ever since the pandemic and the lockdown has started. We've got a lot of queries where people have wanted to comfortably work from their homes and they wanted to have a setup which is equally good to work from home without being disturbed. Although we had previously done a video on our Home Banao channel where we had given you a small home office setup with a limited budget for arranging your desk in your rooms or in your living rooms. But today we are going to take you through creating ambiences of offices for your spaces such that you can use them like your home offices or study rooms for your kids as well because online classes have become a mandate now. So your kids also can use these spaces without being disturbed. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing I have is a list of a few essentials that you will need to make this happen. So if since your balcony is a area, it may be semi open, it may be open, it may be enclosed also. For those of you who have an enclosed balcony, you do not have to worry about waterproofing. But for those of you who do not have an enclosed, en enclosed balcony, you will have to waterproof it. And even the ones who have an enclosed one will have to take care of the flooring waterproofing. The next one will be uh, the flooring choice, whether it's wooden, uh, etc. And the next is your soundproofing. You definitely have to take care of your soundproofing so that there's no echo, there's no disturbance and you can peacefully work. The next is your ventilation. Of course, if it's an enclosed cuboid, you will not be able to work there. You'll start feeling claustrophobic. So you need to take care of your ventilation. Then you have your lighting. Uh, in ventilation, we have a natural lighting that has to be taken care of. And again, we have artificial lighting also that needs to be taken care of. Then we have our storage or ledge, which is very important because you will have a lot of accessories and uh, things to place while you work. Then we have our desk and our chair, the most important of all, which has to be taken care of with good ergonomics. Then we have our computers and other accessories, uh, be it keypads, mouse, books, pen stand. Then we have a whiteboard or a pin board where you'll want to stick have some stick ons or some scribblings for uh, your work to progress then we have plants and the decor which will add to the ambience of your space so now these things are basic essentials that you'll need to develop that you will need to make your home balconies into your home offices or your study rooms i'll be explaining all of this in detail in 11 step process so the first step is where we have a waterproofing done. Now basically your balconies cannot be treated like any other floor area because it has drain pipes. You'll have to take care that the waterproofing is done. So if it is a semi enclosed space, naturally water comes in and you'll have a drain outlet where it flows through. But say you plan to have it as a study room. You cannot have water coming in all the time and the same happening. So you will want to enclose it. Now, when you enclose it also, there are chances of some kind of seepage of water from the walls or the sides. And that seepage gets into the floor, ending up ru ruining the slab. So for this reason, you'll have to do a thorough waterproofing. I would recommend Dr. Fix it for that. It's, uh, it's going to be cheaper and it's even reliable. So you can just uh, get some doctor fix it waterproofing done on your uh, flooring of the balcony. But in case you already have a full fledged balcony where tiling etc has been done, then this stage would be taken care of. So you, you no need not have to worry about it. So our next stage is where we will be doing our flooring. After your waterproofing comes your flooring. So now you want to decide what kind of ambience you want for your study room. Uh, some of us may prefer to have wooden flooring to, you know, give it a more office kind of a feeling. Some of us might want to have some nice grass mat cushioning. Some of us would like just simple maintainable patterns or tiles on the floor. So you can go for any of the options. The best I would recommend will be wooden flooring because the 
ambience wise also it's good and sound proofing wise also it'll be a better uh, option to choose for so our next option is the sound proofing so for your sound proofing now water proofing we have done on the floor while water proofing will also be water proofing and sound proofing both are connected you will want to use uh you will want to use windows upvc windows or glass facades to cover to allow for light coming in but you do not want any water coming in so for this reason if you're going for upvc windows this will take care of your ventilation as well and upvc windows are a good sound proofing material so that will help you in uh, waterproofing and sound proofing as well but for those of you who do not want something like upvc windows where you do not want these channels to be seen you can go for complete glass facades which are uh, manageable by automatic channels wherein you can use a remote control to lift these facades up or to move these or to slide the glass doors so here in this case your sound proofing will not be that great because glass will allow for some amount of sound when there is high breeze on higher floors if you are on a lower floor this option can work but if you are on higher floors this option is definitely not a good choice i would recommend uh, for economical reasons go for upvc uh, window cladding wherein you'll also have waterproofing you'll have soundproofing and you'll also have ventilation so our next thing is the ventilation now you can have windows accompanied with lures you can have a combination of permanent lures and windows opening windows or you can go for windows alone with some um curtains or blinds so here ventil for ventilation by ventilation here i mean is having natural air coming into your space and also natural light that comes into your space of course you do not want your study rooms to be very dark so the next thing the next step is our artificial lighting now why artificial lighting because we've already taken care of ventilation where we are getting enough sunlight but say you want to work in the night there won't be any sunlight so that's why you will need good natural lighting as good artificial lighting as well where you can either have a lamp focused light with table lamps or you can have ambient lighting with spotlights you can also have lighting below your ledge or storage unit such that it falls on your writing pad or on your uh, system where you work you can also have a uh, bigger lights central lights in the space to give a more uh, equal light into all the areas of that space so with respect to lighting my recommendation would be use a lamp stand for your table lamp stand and go with ambient lighting or a spot light you can also go with the uh, lighting profile lighting below the ledge but this will not be of that high significance for a day to day use it's more aesthetical than functional so our next step would be the storage or the ledge so you do not want to be running around the house for every single thing that you may need while working so that's why your storage or your ledge is going to be very important to have all your things organized and sorted in one place so that you can work peacefully so in a storage you can have open storage if you like where you can have a combination of books and decor you or you can have a closed storage with a small ledge where you have all your books and uh, other essentials in, inside the rack and some decor and a few reading books outside which you can take quickly pick up and read or you can have a combination of both open and closed storage in the form of an artwork where you have uh, cubes and cuboids staggered cubes and cuboids with voids and uh, spaces so this will give you a beautiful design and also serve the purpose of storage and decor so our next thing is the desk and the chair the most important things that you will need is the desk and the chair now 
this has to be ergonomically correct so your hands need to be comfortable your legs need to be comfortable while working while studying while writing to avoid any health issues so please go through our uh, other video where we have explained the ergon ergonomics very well and uh, for your desk and your chair you can opt for a free ledge ledge come drawer where you can use the top for uh, placing your systems and the storage the drawers can be used for storage or you can also go for a freestanding desk and the chairs you can go for regular chairs if you do not want to go and invest into something more but just take care that the ergonomics is taken care of or if not you can go for high end revolving chairs or comfortable cush uh, cushion chairs for your study and your office work Also I want to tell you about a few unique designs of desk that you can opt for. Uh one is where it doubles up. It's a space saving desk where you can fold it when not in use and open it while in use. You have some basic storage in it and it's good to go where where you have space constraints. This is the best option. Or you can go for some fancy looking desk like these to make the ambience and the environment of your study area a little better so our next step is the computer and the other accessories so computer you can choose whether if you have laptops you can work with laptops with then make sure that you have some stands along with the laptop to avoid any back pain or to avoid any wrist pain or if you have desktops then you'll have to take care that you have adjusted the heights really well and uh, make sure that you have other accessories in place so you do not have to keep running over for a mouse for a keyboard or for a pen stand or any of the other items that you need while working so take care that you have your computer and other accessories intact in place and in proper working conditions our next step would be the whiteboard pen board or the notice board so This is a must have for those of you who have the habit of taking down notes say you do not want to sit and write in books and if your tasks are something that you need to track throughout the day then a whiteboard is a good option you just write down your task there and then uh, you can keep a track of it as and when it's around you see it for those of you who do not think that you need a marker a board and all to write down things where you just want a pin board to just hang uh immediate snippets or immediate brochures on the board to keep a track of things to keep a track of any information that you need for your work so you can go for a pin board or a notice board so our next essential step would be the plants and greenery so i recommend this as a must have because we have ambiences that do not interact with the outdoors anymore so it's good to bring the outdoor greenery into your homes into your study areas and study areas having a green will always keep you more active it will not let you be lethargic and the greens will also help you be in a good state of mind at any given point so it's definitely a booster to the work that you will be doing and next step would be the decor uh it's not a compulsion but you may find things here and there in your house that you can definitely use as decor like a small frame as a backdrop or in the sides or some uh animal model around or a plant or a vase or something of that sort so anything as a decor is good to go so these were our 11 essential steps to make your balcony into a study room or a home office In case you have any doubts please do write to us in the comment section and we will definitely clear and help you set up your home office If you have liked the video if you have liked the information that we have shared please like the video and subscribe to our channel for more informative videos thank you so much